How's everybody doing tonight? You doing all right? Yeah? You guys are looking good. You're praising good out there. Uh, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, I do have one problem, though. There are absolutely, definitely too many beautiful people on stage. You need to get a couple of more ugly people up there like me to balance it all out. Uh, not a fan. Back in my day, okay, ugly people learned to play an instrument like me, okay, so we could get a girlfriend. Now we got the people who can already get girlfriends also being talented. Cannot have that, all right? It's got to be against the rules somewhere. But uh, the worship team did a great job, didn't they? Can you just give them a hand clap? They're awesome. Uh, this building is awesome. Are you guys glad that you're in here and not in there? Yeah, ain't it? Are you guys glad that the AC works in here instead of the broken one in there? Yeah, me too. Uh, this is a, a fantastic building. Uh, I didn't really get to do much, but uh, I did get a claw. You see these little metal uh, supporting deals going across? I got to crawl across one of those with no ladder or support or safety to help hang up these lights that you see here in the back. So uh, that's my like one stamp of work that I was able to do in this building is almost kill myself hanging up lights. So uh, yeah, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, so Brandon asked me to speak. In, in case you don't know who I am, uh, well, that sounds really arrogant, like everybody should know who I am. Uh, there's a lot of you who don't know who, you, who I am. My name is Jesse. Uh, I've been a part of River Point, uh, this campground, and uh, helping to facilitate camps with Brandon and Becca for a long time. I absolutely uh, adore this place. This is one of my favorite places on the planet. And uh, every summer for the past five summers, uh, everybody in my family, which is my wife and three kids, gets to come down here for a month while I sit at home alone, having to go to work every day. Uh, so I'm very, very, very sad when camp comes around, mainly because I don't get to be here very much, but uh, this is one of the greatest places ever, and uh, I'm excited that Brandon invited me to come back and speak for you guys. Um, he sent us a little note uh, a few weeks ago kind of saying how the service was going to break down and that uh, Sister Genevieve was going to be our, uh, uh, I don't know what you call her, our go-to person before service started. So uh, I sent her a message with my writer. Does everybody know what a writer is? Right. These are the things that celebrities demand when they go places like only brown M&Ms or like all this stuff. So I told Genevieve that I need a bag of peanut butter M&Ms. All right. With a peach vibe Celsius chilled to exactly 36 degrees Fahrenheit. OK. And uh, she said that all I get is water and granola bars and they're all out of granola bars. So Genevieve, thanks for the water. I really appreciate the water. No, I'm kidding, but uh, I really am appreciative of the water. So I'm already like losing it. It's like the Sahara in my mouth. Man, praise God. I'm... So River Point's getting uh, bigger and better, uh, as you can see from this building. And uh, like I said, I don't get to come by very often, and I feel sad about it uh, because I see how great this place is doing, and I think, man, uh, there are people here serving that are taking my jobs. These are jobs that I did. People have stolen them from me, uh, and it makes me a little bit sad. Uh, one of the first things I ever did uh, when I spent the month down here at River Point was uh, drive some tubing trips. This was probably 2009, all right? And in 2009, I'm 20 years old, okay? Um, if you're wondering, yes, I'm halfway to 70 now, so I'm officially an old man. But uh, I was driving this tubing trip, first tubing trip I've ever driven. I got kids sandwiched between tubes in the back of the trailer, all right? People sitting in the bed of the truck, people sitting on the inside of the truck talking to me while I'm driving, and I'm probably going, I don't know, like 14 miles an hour down through all these roads. I was nervous, right? Because I thought, well, I don't want any kids to die on my very first trip. So we get, get to the tubing spot, we drop everybody off, I'm untying all the tubes, and I had a counselor come up to me and start just giving me the business, how I was driving too fast, she almost fell out of the back of the trailer, and that I was entirely unsafe, and that I should be ashamed of myself. And all I did was say, 
okay. And then went on with my day. It was my first experience ever. I thought, man, I cannot believe that I was so dangerous and unsafe. I talked to a couple other people and they said, no, Jesse, you needed to drive faster. I think that lady was just crazy. So been here a long time, got a lot of really good memories. But the greatest thing about all of that is to see that River Point gets bigger and better every year without me. And uh, I think that's awesome because that lets me know that there are always people who are ready to step up to do ministry and, uh, and to do things that are beyond my wildest dreams. So to see this place uh, continue to, to grow and to change lives and to do ministry is absolutely exciting. And, and I hope that you guys are excited about this stuff as much as I am. So uh, I'm going to get started tonight. Brandon did say, though, the messages should be 25 minutes long. And for every minute I'm over 25 minutes, he's going to deduct $100 from my pay. So I'm going to get right started. I'm not going to be a minute longer than 25 minutes because I don't want to owe Brandon any money. All right, so we're just going to get started. I know Brandon talked about uh, a little bit of this last night with Jacob and, uh, and this story here in Genesis, but I'm just going to review some of it if that's okay. Uh, so some background to this that Jacob... Uh, had just stolen his brother's blessing. He had just stolen Esau's blessing, and uh, his brother was mad. Esau was ticked, to be honest, okay? Uh, back in those days, the older brother got everything. The younger brother got nothing. And Jacob weaseled his way in and stole everything from Esau. So he was mad. So Jacob decided that he needed to run away to marry his cousin. And like all of us, right, when we steal something from our brother, our first thought is, I need to marry my cousin. Right? Good. No amens. No amens. That's good. Okay? And it, it is weird. I don't recommend you marry your cousin. Don't do that. It's weird. Okay? But back then, it was, you know, acceptable, I guess, to marry your cousin. I still think it's weird, but it's in the Bible. All right? So he's running away to go marry his cousin. And we're going to start in Genesis chapter 28, verses 10, and we're going to go all the way to 22. I'm reading the whole thing, so just, okay, stick with me a bit, all right? Chapter, uh, verse 10 starts with, Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled towards Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp. Camp? No way. That's where we are. And stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept... He dreamed of a stairway that reached from earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all the directions to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south and all of the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you, and I will protect you wherever you go. One day, I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't even aware of it. Everybody say, this place. Where? This place. But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. The next morning, Jacob got up early. He took the stone he had rested his head against and set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named that place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, that's a lot of ifs, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I will give, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. Everybody just bow your head. Let's pray real quick. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to hear from you tonight, God. I pray right now, God, that you just open our hearts and our minds so that we may receive what you have for us tonight, God. I pray that 
we do not leave this place tonight the same way that we came in. I pray that we just let you change the things in our life that we are struggling with today, God. No matter the situation, no matter the the uh, the struggles or the pain or or the things that we worry about, God, you are there to change those things, God. We believe in that tonight, God. And everybody said, "Amen." You gotta give me a stronger amen than that. The louder you amen, the faster I go. Okay, just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. So I want to talk about three things, okay, that Jacob did that we can learn from uh, and do the same. Well, maybe do the same. We'll see. Okay, the first thing was Jacob that he did was he ran from God. Ran from God. Part of Jacob's story was running from his problems, okay? He's got a brother that he just stole everything from, and so in order to get away from that, that's a pretty big problem, right? Because Esau was probably in the kind of mood when it came to Jacob. Uh, wasn't a big fan of him. So he thought, I'm going to run from my problems. I'm going to go to a faraway land, marry my cousin, good or bad, I don't know. But I'm going to get away from this situation. It's the only thing that he knew how to do. And there is a lot of us here, but we've got problems back home, okay? We've got situations, addictions, uh, whatever that it is that we're running from. And we try to fix those issues oftentimes now, I'm not saying this is you, but some people try to fix these problems by putting themselves into relationships. Trying to find a boyfriend or girlfriend thinking, well, if I can find someone who loves me, air quote, loves me, then maybe my problems won't be problems anymore. Back when I was a teenager, which was many, many moons, many moons ago, I had a lot of problems at home. I was just like many people, okay? Uh... My, uh, my mom passed away when I was 17 years old. And so uh, I had to go live full time with my dad, which, you know, wasn't a big deal, but I had a lot of issues at home with my dad and my stepmom. We fought, butted heads. And uh, for a lot of the time, it seemed like it was just a terrible, miserable experience. And I did everything I could to try and run away from facing those problems. Now, I started dating a girl when I was in high school. And you might think, oh, Jesse, what? this is going to be bad. Well, I, I guess I was one of the lucky ones. I married her, okay? And I'm still married to her. And she's the most wonderful person I've ever met in my entire life, Lauren. Uh, yeah, you can give her a hand. I tell you, she needs, she needs prayer more than she needs a hand clap because she's got to deal with Piper all month long. And by golly, that little girl is something else. She's three. She might need an exorcism. I don't know. That girl can really get it going sometimes. But uh, I tried to run away from those problems. I didn't try to face them. I didn't try to reach out to God with those things. I tried to run away. And oftentimes, that's what we do. We have problems. We have situations. And we want to run away from them and run from God. We think we can fix these things all by ourselves. But on this journey, okay, God found Jacob. This is part number two. I guess Jacob didn't really do anything here because God did all the finding, but God found Jacob, and in return, Jacob found God. Jacob found a place to rest in his journey, okay? He's in the wilderness, uh, kind of like we are here, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, he was such in the middle of nowhere, all right, the rocks started to look comfy, right? Because the Bible says he found a good rock to lay his head on. And I don't know about you, but when I find rocks, I normally don't think, man, that looks like a pretty sweet pillow. Does anybody like rocks for pillows? Anybody? I mean, it's okay if you do. Like, some people got to be weird. They like rocks for pillows. Okay, we got a, we got a few. That's Okay. Uh, I usually like soft pillows. I like to put my head on soft things, but Jacob found a nice rock to put his head on. And uh, personally, I think that's some really, really bad inflation, okay? You think inflation's bad right now? Imagine thinking that a rock looked comfortable, okay? That's how bad the economy was back in the Bible times, all right? I mean, inflation, I think, is bad right now because putting gas in my car looks like I'm making a car payment instead of paying for gas. And 
McDonald's is starting to look like a three-star restaurant. And I'm not talking Yelp reviews, I'm talking Michelin stars. Anybody know what I mean? You're paying like 50 bucks to go to McDonald's. But uh, Jacob thought, yeah, this rock, it looks really comfortable. I'm going to lay my head on there. I'm going to take a rest. And uh, he wasn't looking for God when he decided to rest for the night, but God found him unexpectedly. And there are many of you guys here tonight that you're not actively looking for God. And that's okay, because somehow you ended up here anyway. Somehow you're at River Point Christian Camp at... 70 Church Camp Lane, and you're experiencing God. Somehow you ended up here on the campground, and God is pursuing you. You may not have been actively looking for it, but you are here. It's not a coincidence. This didn't happen by chance. It's not by luck, but because God loves you, that he cares about you, and wants to have a relationship with you, that you are here tonight. You may not think that something this specific could be orchestrated by God, but I promise you that God does anything and everything he can do to make sure that you are at the right place at the right time to hear the right message from God. It may not be tonight. It may not be tomorrow, this week, or even this year, but God is chasing you down and he will never stop. He will make his presence known. In Psalms 139, verse 7, it says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. No matter what you try to do, you cannot escape God. Does anybody have uh, the new NCAA 25 football game? Come on. I should have heard a lot of amens from the guys right there. NCAA 25. Been waiting for that game for about 11 years. When was the last one? Is it 14 or 13? 14, yeah. See, my, 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 my man knew uh, last year that happened. Uh, so I, I recently just saw a TikTok of somebody playing NCAA 25, all right? This is like all my TikTok feed is. It's this. Same thing with Instagram Reels. It's this game just over and over, and I love it, okay? But this guy, he was playing. He throws a bomb down the sideline to his receiver. His receiver, you, you heard the saying, like, he climbed the ladder, right? Climbed the ladder to get that catch, baby. I'm not talking about a metaphorical ladder. This guy in the game literally was 15 feet in the air, caught the ball and just standing up there. Major glitch in the game. I don't know what was going on. But uh, he definitely escaped the defender there. He's dancing on top of him, on top of his head. Uh, It was a wild video. But uh, even that guy who could jump 15 feet in the air and walk around on nothing can't escape the love of God. And so no matter what you do, no matter how far you run, no matter what types of problems you think you have, you can never escape from God. So the third thing is that Jacob dedicated a place in his life to God. So the third thing we can do is dedicate. And the worship team can come ahead and come up. But Jacob dedicated that campsite, that lowly rock, maybe there was a tree, some grass, but he dedicated that area and his life to God. This place is worth remembering. This place is where relationships are built. This place is where memories are made. But this place is really worth remembering because of the impact that God has in your life. Right now, I could take you to that other building and show you the exact spot on that floor where God called me to youth ministry. I can walk over to that building, show you the exact spot on that floor where I was first filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a place that is worth remembering. This place is worth memorializing. So at this moment, will my fantastic assistants Come, please bring up the rocks. I don't mean Dwayne Johnson. I mentioned bags or rocks. Yeah, I know. It's not very funny. Sorry. These are some beautiful rocks. It's going to be loud, but that's okay. These rocks are going to be our memorial of what God has done. I want everybody at some point tonight if not right now, 
I'll give you an opportunity to do that. But I want everyone in here, every student, to take one of these rocks as a memorial, as something that they can remember what God has done in their life. We should always be remembering. We should always memorialize the things that God has done. It's easy to forget what happened at camp after camp's over. It's easy, easy to ignore it and say, well, whatever happened there, I'll wait for the next year to go back and get some of that. But I want to challenge you to take a piece of this place back with you to your homes, to your churches, to your schools, to your neighborhoods. At this moment, if all the staff could come up, um, up to the front to the altars. I'm closing. After Jacob had his encounter, he sought after God. And the last thing that we need to do is to seek. He didn't wait for God to find him again. Jacob didn't. He sought after God. He went from a passive relationship, a knowing of who God was, to an active relationship, to seeking to know more about who God is. This was not the last encounter that Jacob ever had with God, it was this crazy dream. Just ask one of your youth pastors about his MMA record, okay? Jacob's want to know. This was not the last encounter that he had with God, but he continued to actively seek after him. And tonight, I want you to take an opportunity, a few moments, to seek after God. In Jeremiah 29, 13, okay, I love the way that this verse is worded. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your hearts. It doesn't say if and then maybe. It doesn't use vague, wishy-washy language. It says, when you seek me, you will seek me. I challenge you to make an active pursuit after God. Seek after God. And when you seek, you will find. We don't have to wait for God to show up in a dream. We don't have to wait for the circumstances to be just right. We don't need to wait for our friends to be in the right mood. We can make an active pursuit to God. God is calling you now. God wants to see your life changed now. Whether that is salvation for the very first time, or maybe it's a purpose that you've been searching in your life. God, what do I do after high school? Where is my life going? What do you have planned for me? I challenge you to come to seek after God and to find that tonight. If this is you, I challenge you to come up now. We have youth pastors up here ready to pray for you. Come up front and seek after God. We don't have to leave it here. We can take God with us. This place is not stationary. God is wherever we are. Just as we cannot escape God in the same breath that he is always here. When we struggle, when we fail, when we feel hopeless and lost, God is there. When we're sad, we're depressed, we're anxious, we're bitter or we're angry, God is there with you. When our life is in chaos, we're unsure of how we survive until tomorrow, God is in that place. This place is not just River Point Camp. This place is not just the building or around the stage next to a worship team that is incredible. This place goes with you everywhere that you go. Don't leave here without God. Don't leave here without having that moment that Jacob had. Don't leave here without a reason to memorialize what God has done for you. 
as we close tonight, the worship team prays another song. I challenge you guys to come up front. Come up to the altar. Have a moment with God. Seek after him. We do a lot of running from our problems, a lot of running from the situations in life, but God is here waiting for you with open arms to show you the love that you are so worthy of. God doesn't wish to see anybody leave this place the same that they came as. God loves you too much to leave you in your mess. God sees where you are. He sees your situation. He sees how you feel. He sees how you think that things aren't worth it or that there's no hope. But there is hope. There's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope in his salvation. There's hope in the power of God. And the fact that we can take that power and that grace wherever we are should give us encouragement. As the worship team begins to sing, just make your way up front. Everybody, stand up. I'm going to do. I'm going to take just a few moments, a few moments to seek after God. But. Um...